Growing up, I suppose like a lot of young lads, I'd have considered a whole variety of things to do with my life, and priesthood was one of those things. There were other things like music, I played a lot of music, and then I eventually went on to study law in UCG. So I had a few years there of study and then considering again what I would like to do with my life. And at that stage I decided just to give it a try, see how it would go for a year or two. I was about 22 years of age at the time. So eight years later, finished the course and ordained last Sunday. Well, you'd have just the natural reservations about something new, but it's something I'm looking forward to. It's going to be a challenge certainly today, and it's something that I'm delighted to be able to take up on. And as I talk to more and more priests around the place, I, I know that priesthood is a life worth living. And Father Sean Duggan joins us now. Father Sean, you really sowed your wild oats in college. You got it all out of your system <laughs> all beforehand. Out of my system. No oats left. <laughs> well, I did everything that the students are infamous for, and that includes Studying a bit of study and going around to lectures, exam yeah? time. Yeah. Yeah, all yeah. That. So it was a great experience. I'm very happy to have that opportunity in my life. And indeed, a lot of my friends who I studied law with were there last Sunday, and it was great to see them. Mind you, some of them have been laid off recently, you know, on account of the, the downturn. And they're beginning to look again at their life and to see what exactly they want in their life. Job for life. A job for life. <laughs> Come on in, Everyone's Brian. Everyone's looking for it We've now. We've got plenty of rooms. Yeah. Come on, you'll be most welcome. Uh, what about the, that decision? You know, you're saying it was in the back of your mind. Mm. It was there in teenage years. It ebbed sure, and yeah. flowed, came mm. in and out. Mm. Went to college. You were involved in music a lot. That's right. Well, yeah. Was there one sort of defining moment where you said, you know, this law isn't for me okay. or whatever else I've been pursuing isn't for me. I'm going to check out this sure. the priesthood. Okay. Well, I'd say right up until now, even after my eight years as a redemptorist, I still have a keen interest in law and in legal matters, and in a lot of work that I do, particularly social justice work. Uh, my study in law has been very, very helpful, and in helping people who are marginalised, and just to, you know, to help them find their voice in what can be difficult, difficult times for people in a whole variety of circumstances. But was there one particular instance? Well, I guess the, the day that I actually decided to join, but I'd have been thinking about it on and off over the years. I guess after finishing my legal study, I was beginning my apprenticeship as a solicitor. And that would have carried me on for another few years as I finished my apprenticeship, then drawn into a, a firm as a junior associate, senior associate, and so on and on. So I decided just to make a break for it and see how it would go for a year or two years, yeah. and then eight years later, here You're I am. Still, but yeah. you did, I mean, yeah. you had the, the law to fall back on, mm, I suppose. That's true. Yeah. And mm. as Tony said, your father advised you to, to, you know, to live a little and yeah. to, to do mm. other things just in case it didn't. Mm. Exactly, yeah, and I suppose that will always that will always stand to me. As part of our training then, we did further studies in philosophy and theology. We also do a lot of work on human development, which is an essential part of our training nowadays. And as well as that then, there's the practical work placements that we do. Quite, quite a variety of them. The, the training, you, you mm. did nine years, was it? Uh, eight, was eight years. Eight years yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. Please don't Do be you, adding another year yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, do you think, because some people might say, well, why is it so long? Do okay. you think that is to sort, of, to sort out mm. those that yeah. are really committed to it and okay. those who may be wavering on it? Well, I'd say, for myself, I needed those eight years. Mm. Now, some might say, well, is it really necessary that it be so long? Maybe it could be clipped here and there. But eight years served me well in making a decision. And you're not asked to make one big decision at a time, but each way along the way you're asked to join, then see how things go. And it's not just all my decision either. The Redemptorists have also decided along the way that I'm fit to go along. And I guess one of the defining characteristics or the essential elements to be accepted for uh, final vows as a redemptress and priesthood is a person's ability to work with people and particularly to work with lay people and as redemptress in Ireland that is an essential part of our work and will be right into the future. Can I ask, during those eight years, are you encouraged to socialise in pubs or, uh, I mean, do you have to take, I mean, you haven't fully taken mm. your vows, mm. so sure. are you allowed to do anything during mm. those eight years with, with, anything? with you know, with members <laughs> of the opposite on, sex or anything like that, yeah. I mean, or, you know, but what's sure. the story there? Sure. Well, uh, once, once you take your vows, you're making that commitment to the community and to this way of life, so that'll be chastity, poverty, obedience. Of course, you're encouraged to have friendships and to socialise. Not everyone is into pubs. 
So there's a whole variety of different things people could do. And uh, you're, you are encouraged and actively encouraged to participate and not to be cut off. I guess in years gone by, I don't know about it because I'm not old enough, but religious life would have been very much cut off from people, I think, mm -hmm. or cut off from society. That's not the case as it is now. And uh, we certainly are very much involved in the community and wherever we live. You mentioned there in the past the way mm. uh, religious life would have been. In the past as well, the mm. priest would have been placed on a pedestal. Sure, yeah. Perhaps some people may not have the same attitude towards mm. the priesthood now and towards mm. priests, and they may sort of put a bit of distance between themselves and the priest. Do you sure. think that's going to okay. be difficult? to deal with? Uh, well, I think it's changing. I think the church is changing. I think we're in a time of crisis, not just for the church though, but for Irish society. We're a state that's quite young and are still trying to find our identity. You know, who are we? I'd say for the church, it is amongst everything that's happening. It's also a time of renewal. I guess the three of us, Tony, uh, myself and Brian, are newly, uh, newly ordained and we're beginning along our journey. And my hope would be, and I'd definitely see my engagements with people that that distance or that pedestal stuff from long ago mm. isn't there nowadays and I welcome that because I certainly don't want a distance between me and people. Yeah but you, do, you don't see people maybe a bit reluctant to you know to sort of to let you into a, a sort of a close relationship with okay. them being a family in that. Uh, well I'd say when people find out what I do obviously family and friends they're always they know who I am and what I do as I get to know people I'd say people are genuinely intrigued and very interested to hear more a little bit like here this morning but you know, hear a bit about my background from a, and I grew up in Galway five stars three brothers three of them are married the nieces and nephews uh, we use age it's grocery and butcher and that's the kind of life that I grew up with yeah. and so that's that's my background and it's good for all that exactly. yeah. so different from any of the rest and we're <laughs> intrigued to hear about it as well so stay with us because sure. after we'll be speaking a recently ordained priest plus we'll be finding about your current feelings regarding Catholic Church. Stay with us.